Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Maninian Grammar. This is the first course. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Varibharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Varibharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya So far, we have studied the background theory of compounding or samasa as stated in the Paninian grammar and as explained in the Paninian grammatical tradition. This tradition starts from Panini himself, and then we have Katyayana and Patanjali and Bhartrahari and so many other great scholars coming to the modern age also we have such stalwarts in the field who have commented upon the process of compounding and have given us the nectar of scholarship in the form of traditional works, sources, some of which are quoted at the end of each lecture in this course. We base our analysis and our explanation of the process of compounding on all these sources and we also remain grateful and express our heartfelt gratitude to our teachers and the tradition. So far we have studied the Karaka theory as well as the Samartha theory. We then also studied the process of compounding we also studied some basic concepts. We studied what is a laukika vigraha and what is an alaukika vigraha. Then we looked at the process of compounding in detail and in doing so, constantly we were referring to the sutras of Panini and in accordance with those sutras, certain steps in the derivation of compounds takes place. That's what we have been constantly saying. Now in this lecture and in the coming lectures, we shall state those rules, the sutras of Panini, which are required for performing those respective stages in the derivation of the compounds. So, rules of compounding in Paninian grammar. We have already studied this part. The first and the foremost aspect of the process of the derivation of the compounds or samasas is the semantic conditioning where we need two or more interrelated words as parts of a sentence, parts of one sentence. We have already seen that the process of compounding takes place within a sentence. Sentence is the input 
for the process of compounding. And so, Samarthaha Padavidhihi is the Sutra 2.1.1 which deals with this particular semantic conditioning. The passages from the Vyakarana Mahabhashya which explained what is Samartha which we studied earlier, all of that is based on this particular sutra. In fact, Patanjali, the Vyakarana Mahabhashya Karal has devoted one entire anhika in explaining this particular sutra, Samarthaha Padavidhihi. What this sutra primarily means is that an operation based on the pada as input should be capable of denoting the interrelated meaning and should denote it as one merged unit. Samarthaha pada vidhi. The samarthya as explained by Patanjali as intended in this particular sutra is of two kinds, Vipeksha Lakshana Samarthya and also Ekarthi Bhava Lakshana Samarthya. We have studied what is Vipeksha, we have also studied what is Ekarthi Bhava. We also studied the passage from the Vyakarana Mahabhashya where the word Samartha was interpreted in four ways and we said that Samprekshitartha and Sambaddhartha Samartha is the explanation of Vyapeksha, whereas Sangatartha and Samsrishtartha are the explanations of Ekarthi Bhava. The sutra and the principle stated therein, namely that an operation based on the Pada as input is Samartha should be capable of denoting the interrelated meaning and also it should denote it as one merged integrated unit. So this particular principle governs the entire semantic conditioning, the entire process of compounding. So wherever we see the sutras, prescribing or describing and stating the compounds, this particular condition, this particular sutra presents itself automatically because this is the base, this is the core idea of the process of compounding. In the absence of the application of this particular sutra, the process of compounding would not take place. What this sutra entails is that the speaker has decided that the two words which are interlinked, interrelated, meaning wise, the speaker has decided to merge them together and make them one unit at three levels, Pada, Artha and Svara. This is what this sutra in a nutshell tells us. So this is the semantic conditioning. Then comes the name of the entire process. And here we have a sutra, Prakkadarat Samasaha, 2.1.3. This sutra says that before the word Kadara, which appears in 2.2.38, Kadara Karmadharaye. So before this sutra, and this sutra including every process prescribed by this sutra onwards, 213 onwards, is called samasa. I repeat, before the word kadara, which appears in 2.2.38 kadara karmadharaye, every process prescribed by this particular sutra onwards, 213 onwards, is called Samasa. This is considered to be an Adhikara Sutra and its scope is stated 
in the sutra itself that is 2.2.38. So we have 213 and 2238, all the sutras in between, they describe and also prescribe a process. And the name of this particular process is Samasa. And we have already seen the meaning of the word Samasa. So in a nutshell, we can say that Ashtadhyayi 2.1 and also 2.2 contain sutras which prescribing the process of compounding. 2.2 consists of only 38 sutras, the smallest pada in the Ashtadhyayi. So once again, we can say that 2.1 and 2.2 contain sutras which prescribe compounding. So if you want to search for a sutra prescribing a particular compound, you will have to search it into 2.1 and 2.2. This is the content of these two sections. To know such a content of parts of the text is called in the tradition Vipatti. Now let us go to the necessary condition. We already know what is the semantic condition. We already know what is the name of the process. Now we go to the necessary condition stated by the sutras. So we have two sutras which state this necessary condition. The first one is sup, which continues from 2.1.2 and we take it down to 2.1.4, which is saha supa. Sup is 1.1 one, one, and saha supa, supa is 3.1. So the meaning is that a sup together with another sup. This is what is the necessary condition. And of course, Samasaha continues. And so we have the meaning of the Sutra. Subantam, this is the expansion of Sup from 212. Samartham, Samartha Padavidhi. Subantena, this is the expansion of Supa. Samarthena, again Samartha Padavidhi. Saha Samasyate. Samasaha. This is the meaning of this particular sutra. This is the necessary condition. So, sup, saha, supa, samasaha continues from 213, and samarthaha is already there from 211. And this is what is the meaning of the sutra. This is the basic necessary condition for the process of compounding to take place. You need two subantas. What this also means is that interrelated word, which is a subanta only, is compounded with another subanta only. By taking the risk of sounding little strict, still we would like to use the word only twice and we would read the two bullets again. Interrelated word, which is a subanta only, this is the necessary condition. It has to be a subanta. And this subanta is compounded with another subanta only. So by saying the word only, we are excluding certain other types of words. Obviously, that word is a tinganta type of word. So subanta can never be compounded with the tinganta. This is what this basic necessary condition excludes and dictates. We have seen that the reason why this is happening is because the speakers of Sanskrit have not thought about this particular process and have not produced usage in accordance with such a thought. And a tinganta can never be compounded with another tinganta. 
So this is the implication of the necessary condition. And this is once again, this is a by default condition because as we shall see later on, when we study the Sutra Mayura Vamsakadayascha, we shall study that there are certain exceptional cases where a Tinganta is compounded with another Tinganta, but that is only an exception and that needs a strong theoretical base in the form of a positive statement which says that only one Subanta is compounded with another Subanta only and if that is interrelated and Tinganta is never compounded with a Subanta or with another Tinganta as a by default rule. So Sahasupa is also considered as an Adhikara Sutra and the scope of this Adhikara Sutra is up to 2.2.38 that is the entire Samasa section. So Sahasupa governs the entire Samasa section. So this is the necessary basic condition for the process of compounding. In the later tradition has also interpreted this particular sutra Sahasupa as Vidhi Sutra. That means that this sutra is a Samasa prescribing sutra, Vidhi Sutra. What this means then is that in general any interrelated subhata can be compounded with any other interrelated subhanta. And you don't specify which subhanta is compounded with which another interrelated subhanta. And whether there is any additional meaning that is conveyed only by the process of compounding or not. Nothing is specified. So any subhanta can be compounded with any other interrelated subhanta. Such a generic explanation and laying down of the necessary condition is used by the tradition to provide rule justification for those compounds which are in use but, but which do not have explicit justification from the sutras probably because those compounds they came into the usage at a later date. So this is how the Sutra Sahasupa is interpreted. The Samasa output thus generated by this Vidhi interpretation of Sahasupa 214 is termed as Supsup Samasa or Kevala Samasa by the later commentators. Supsup Samasa or Kevala Samasa. So any Samasa for which you will not find any specific statement in the grammar of Panini can be termed as Supsup Samasa or Kevala Samasa and the justification for such a Samasa can be 214 Saha Supa which is a very generic statement. Any Subanta which is interrelated to any other Subanta can be compounded. And the example cited is Purvam Bhutaha and this gets compounded and you have the output in the form of Bhuta Purvaha. Purvam Bhutaha, Bhuta Purvaha. This is cited as the example of such a Supsup Samasa or Kevala Samasa. But we find several examples and several instances where the commentators comment upon compounds and similar words and say that they are to be considered as Kevala Samasas or Supsup Samasa generated by this particular Sutra. Especially in the commentaries written on the Mahakavyas, we come across such statements quite regularly. After the laying down of the necessary condition by Sahasupa. Let us now study 
how purva pada nirdharana is done so now alaukika vigraha has taken place and after this is done we do the purva pada nirdharana we decide the initial member of the compound and the final member of the compound uttara pada so purva pada nirdharana is determination of the initial member of the compound this is done by the sutra upasarjanam purvam 2230 the subanta which is termed as upasarjana is determined as purva pada and what remains is generally the uttara pada so upasarjanam purvam states that any element which is upasarjana is the initial member of the compound purvam now the next question is how does the grammatical system determine which is an upasarjana and this question is addressed by panini himself who says that prathama nirdishtam samase upasarjanam 1 2 43 what this means is that that subanta which is mentioned in the prathama vibhakti in the samasa prescribing sutra samasa shastre that is termed as upasarjana we repeat that subanta which is mentioned in prathama vibhakti in the samasa prescribing sutra samasa shastre is termed upasarjana let us take an example shashti 228 in this sutra the word shashti appears in prathama there is only one subanta and this subanta is shashti and this is mentioned in prathama so now the subanta which ends in shashti that is a shashtyanta is termed as upasarjana and then this shashtyanta is placed as the initial member of the samasa so for example if you have a sentence ragnya purusha gachati of course in a sentence the order is not so significant and you can obviously put the word ragnya at different places it can come in the initial position of the sentence or it can also come in the middle of the sentence or it can also go and occupy the final position in the sentence so we can have radnya purusho gachati or purusho radnyo gachati or gachati purusho radnya the meaning is same now when we decide that radnya purusha is to be compounded as a speaker then obviously we decide the order of the compound we decide what is going to be the purva pad now in this case since shashti appears in the prathama vibhakti in the sutra we will say that the shashtyanta subanta in this case is radnya and it is interrelated to another subanta in the sentence namely purushaha so radnya is termed upasarjana and then it is placed as the initial member of the samasa so now we will have radnya and purusha and our process of compounding will now begin once we write the alaukika vigraha so we will write it as rajan plus gnas this is shashti vibhakti plus purusha plus so this is prathama so this is the shashtyanta pada and this occupies the first position primarily because the word shashti occurs in the prathama vibhakti in the sutra shashti let us take another example the sutra is panchami bhayena this sutra states the vibhakti tatpurusha panchami tatpurusha this is 2137 what this means is that an interrelated subanta which ends in panchami that is in the fifth triplet is compounded with another interrelated subanta whose pratipadika is bhaya now in this sutra the subanta panchami is mentioned in prathama 
and therefore so panchami panchamya panchamya panchami is one one so any subanta which ends in panchami and which is interrelated to bhaya is termed upasarjana and that will be placed as the initial member of the samasa so if we have the meaning namely fear from a thief chorat bhayam you can write it as bhayam chorat still chorat because it is panchami of chor and it is interrelated to bhaya so it will be termed as upasarjana and it will be placed as the first member of the samasa so chorat bhayam is the sentence and the alaukika vigraha is chora plus ngas plus bhaya plus su and then we see that chora plus ngas has occupied the initial position of the compound and then finally we get the compound output namely chora bhaya another example of the same kind is saptami shaundaihi in this case the word saptami appears in the first case prathama vipakti saptami saptamyau saptamyaha this is 2140 and the meaning of the sutra is an interrelated subanta which ends in saptami that is the seventh triplet is compounded with another interrelated subanta whose pratipadika is shaunda so any subanta which ends in saptami and which is interrelated to shaunda is termed upasarjana and will be placed as initial member of the samasa so if you have the meaning skilled and dice akshesu shaunda or shaunda akshesu where akshesu is saptami of aksha and is interrelated to shaunda it is termed upasarjana by prathama nirdishtam samasopasarjanam and will be placed as first member of the samasa and so we'll have akshesu shaunda then it is converted into alaukika vigraha as akshasu shaunda su and here we see aksha plus su this is the saptami bahuvachana so aksha plus su and this is the prathama ekavachana shaunda plus su so this will occupy the initial position and finally we'll get the output aksha shaunda to summarize the process of compounding is rule based in paninian grammar starting at the cognitive level and coming down to the auditory level there are rules for undergoing the process of merging from separate entities minutely detailing every aspect and providing systemic support there are more such steps in the process which are rule based and we shall study them in the next lecture these are our references samarthan hikar which was mentioned earlier in the lecture thank you very much for your patience